Have you noticed poor idle or blue smoke from your Subaru Sandbar when you first started up after it being parked for a while? It could be bad valve stem seals. In today's video, we're going to be replacing valve stem seals on my 1994 Subaru Sandbar KS4 with an EN07 engine. With that said, let's go ahead and get into the repair. Okay, so some of the things we're gonna need for this service, we're gonna need a rocker cover gasket, and that is uh, SP0001 from Oh No. It doesn't look like there is a uh, Subaru Genuine gasket available anymore. This one is pretty readily available online from Amazon Japan and from Japan Parts and a couple other places. We've got a universal valve spring compressor. I haven't used this on the Subaru EN07, so hopefully it works. You're gonna need your new intake valve seals and your new exhaust valve seals, part numbers as shown, and they will be in the description of the video. We've got a set of CTA uh, valve seal pliers. Not sure if they'll work with the engine in place or not due to their size. Uh, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. And we've got the wrinkle red valve cover or rocker cover to go on in place of the factory one. So we're gonna be replacing that. And we'll be doing a valve adjustment once we get the valve train back in place after replacing the valve stem seals. We'll also be needing this Lyle tool, a 19700 valve holder tool. It's basically an air hose that threads into the spark plug hole and we'll pressurize the cylinder and keep the valves sticking up when we take the valve spring off because if not, the valve would fall into the cylinder and that would be a very bad time. All right, so first thing we need to do is remove our spark plug wires. We'll set those off to the side. I believe then all we have is one hose up here. I believe six 10 millimeter headed bolts and a 12 millimeter headed bolt that holds this ground wire on. And we'll just swing those out of the way like so. Careful removing this hose, likely it has gotten brittle with age and it would be recommended to replace it at this time. We'll set the old rocker cover to the side as we're not reusing it. And we'll go ahead and remove our old gasket. Not good seeing this amount of buildup in here with this being such a low kilometer engine, uh, 41,000 kilometers. I wouldn't expect to see this kind of buildup, but you know, it appears 
this vehicle might not have been serviced as much as it should have been. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and we're gonna loosen these five 12 millimeter headed bolts that hold the rocker shaft into place. Remove the rocker arms and rocker shaft as an assembly. We want to do this a little bit at a time. I'm gonna start at the outside and work our way in. And work our way back out. Just work them until they are all loose. And just slowly want to take the tension off of those valves and the rockers. And I believe we've got all our tension off, so we'll finish loosening all the bolts and remove this as an assembly. Take that off very carefully and set it to the side. All right, so now all the tension is off of all the valves, all the valve springs. So now what we're gonna do is remove all four of the spark plugs. We're gonna rotate the engine till each individual piston, whichever cylinder we're working on, the piston is at top dead center. We will then hook our valve holder tool in through the spark plug hole put pressurized air in the cylinder and that will hold the valves in place so we can compress the valve spring, remove the keepers and the valve spring, and then get to those valve stem seals and replace them one by one. And hopefully not drop a valve into the engine, which would be a very bad time, meaning the cylinder head would have to be removed at that point. All right, now that all four spark plugs are out, I'm gonna get my boroscope and I'm gonna put it in one of these cylinders. I think we'll start down here at the far end. And uh, like I said, make sure it comes all the way up. We'll put our hose in here, put the shop air in there, and we'll start taking off the valve springs. All right, so hit a little bit of a snag. It doesn't look like this valve spring compressor tool is gonna work on this engine. So what I'm gonna do is take a drum brake spring tool and try to manually press these valves in and remove the keepers with a magnet. Hopefully this works and doesn't uh, backfire on me. So we're gonna go ahead and attach the shop air now and try to go ahead and remove the exhaust valve string here. And success, we got the valve spring off. We got the keeper. And the top plate. Thanks to our magnet, might be a little bit of pain getting that back together. Uh, got quite a bit of leakage here. Let's go ahead and remove that old exhaust valve seal. Grab our valve stem seal pliers. And we got the old seal off. 
We can go ahead and lube up our new seal with a little bit of, take a look at the old seal there. Pretty hard, not a lot of spring to it. That was letting oil leak into our cylinders and cause smoking when we started the engine. What we're gonna do now is take one of our new exhaust valve seals. We'll lube it up really good with some engine assembly lube and we'll slide it back down there till it's fully seated. There's our old seal versus our new seal. I'm gonna take a 12 point socket and I'm gonna gently tap this down to the seal is flush with the head. Just like so. And we're ready to put our spring back on. All right, now the new seal is on and seated. We can go ahead and reinstall the valve spring and the keepers. Now that the exhaust valve is done, we'll go ahead and repeat it on our intake valve. Then we simply gotta do it for three more sets. There's our crusty old intake valve stem seal. And our new one. You simply want to tap until the sound of your taps goes from uh, a lighter, airy sound to a denser sound. That lets you know that the seal is bottomed out. As you heard uh, at the bottom of, or at the end of my tapping, it got a lot denser. That let me know to stop that it had fully seated. Well, you can also visually check that the valve stem seal is about a millimeter or so from the bottom. Uh, where it would meet the cylinder head, there is just the slightest bit of gap there. So now we can go ahead and reinstall that intake spring and the keepers. And the keepers are in place and we are done with cylinder four. So let's go ahead and repeat the process. All right, just finish rotating the crank. Cylinder three's piston is all the way to the top of the stroke. Go ahead and insert the valve holding tool. Attach our shop air and repeat our process.
and set. These things can be a aggravating little, some aggravating little boogers. Make sure you got it in there fully seated. All right, and the last cylinder is ready to go. All right, guys, and there we have it. All of our valve stem seals have been replaced now. Now we can go ahead and reinstall the rocker arm assembly. All right, guys, now we can make sure our rocker arm assembly is clean and free of any debris. We'll add a little bit of the ultra slick assembly lube to it and to our camshaft to make sure everything is good and looped up for when we start the engine up. Also want to make sure there's no debris or anything here on the camshaft, on the uh, valve stems or the valve uh, tips, the valve springs, make sure no junk has fallen in there, cleaned it up the best you can. Hopefully uh, you didn't let anything drop down in there to start with. But, uh, sometimes it can't be helped, so just make sure you clean it up as good as possible. You do have some little washers on the sides here. Make sure that they are sliding in uh, beside the slot for the rocker shaft rather than on it. Take your rocker arms are on top of the valve stem tip. slowly tighten these down as I said and final torque is 1.6 kilogram meters uh, plus or minus 0.15 which equates out to right about 16 Newton meters all right now they're pretty much all snug down so uh Again, we're going to check our rocker arms, make sure everything is where it should be. I've not got any massive binding going on. Set our torque wrench. Set our torque wrench and torque them down. Again, as I said, uh, 1.6 plus or minus 0.15 kilogram meters which is right at 
16 and a half Newton meters. It's actually 16.6, I believe. So we're just gonna go ahead to 17 Newton meters. All right, now we will put our ratchet and socket on the crank pulley and we will rotate the engine slowly, making sure none of the valve train is binding. Uh, we'll go ahead and rotate it two or three revolutions if everything looks good. And like I said, we'll go ahead and check our valve clearances and adjust them as needed. All right, slowly gonna crank over the engine. All right, all our valves are opening, closing as they should. So as I said, we're gonna go ahead and set the engine up and do a valve adjustment or at least check our valve clearances. All right, with the timing mark lined up on the crank pulley, I'll insert a pitcher. We can adjust the intake and exhaust on cylinder one, the intake on cylinder two, and the exhaust on cylinder three. Our spec should be 0.15 for our intake and 0.2 for our exhaust, and that's in millimeters. A little on the loose side, but not terrible. Quite loose on our intake side, so we will be adjusting. All right, now what we'll do is turn the crank another full revolution, and then we can do intake exhaust here. We can do intake here and exhaust here, and we'll be done with the adjustment. All right, I've gone ahead and adjusted all of our valves. Everything is good to go. So now we can take some brake parts cleaner and a uh, razor blade and go around the perimeter here of the cylinder head where the sealing surface is and clean that all up, get it nice and clean in preparation for installing that new rocker cover with the new rocker cover gasket. All right, now that we've got most of the big junk uh, scraped off there with a razor blade, take this brake parts cleaner on a rag and go around the perimeter. 
and do one final shine up. Doesn't have to be perfect, just make sure there's no junk or residue or oil in the line where that uh, gasket will be sealing. You can pretty much see where the old gasket was. There's a line around uh, the perimeter there. All right, so we can go ahead and grab our new rocker cover and a rocker cover gasket. Check that out. This thing is beautiful. Right, so we got our gasket and our little O-rings for our bolts. Now, this isn't in the factory service manual for the Sambar, but it is in the factory service manual for basically every other Subaru model. And that is to take a little bit of RTV silicone and just dab it in the corners here and here. It just helps seal up where it makes that sharp turn over the cam uh, carrier there. So there you go. You don't need a ton of this stuff, just a little dab in each corner. Now on the other side of that rocker cover, you wanna put your O-rings in the grooves around where the bolt heads go. It can be a little bit of a pain to get the pop in there because they are slightly bigger than the groove which they sit in. We'll pop right in there. All right, and install it back on to the cylinder head. Install your bolts. We're gonna to torque these bolts down to 6.8 Newton meters, uh, but we're not gonna do it all at one time because we don't wanna strain any one individual bolt. So we'll go in a couple passes around until we achieve that torque on all six. All right, now we'll go ahead and take them all to 6.8. All right, and we're all set. Now all we've got to do is reinstall the spark plugs, spark plug wires, our breather, and our ground strap, and uh, install our oil cap, and we will be done. Okay. 
pop our breather hose back on there. We can return our spark plug wires over with their hold downs. Pop all our spark plug wires back in their holders. And put them back on their cylinders. set aside for putting our oil cap on and our ground wire our old oil cap is uh kind of gross and grungy looking compared to this beautiful new rocker cover kind of want to go uh get a new oil cap And there we go, that's a much nicer looking oil cap than the uh, one that was on the sandbar. Luckily Subaru uses the same oil cap on basically every engine. It really irks my OCD that that is not upright when fully tight. But uh, there we have it guys, there is our completed valve stem seal replacement and our installation of our, uh, God I hope I say this right, Akabo. Akabu, I gotta look it up. I'll put it on the screen. A couple of but the wrinkle red rocker cover here on the sandbar. And man, it looks amazing. Now it makes me wanna clean up all this old exhaust and uh, clean the rest of the engine bay because it looks like a jewel surrounded by junk. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you guys in the next one.